Great. So my name is Ross Yelsey. I'm an assistant director of admission and marketing here at Columbia Journalism School. I'd like to welcome you all to this conversation about our Master of Arts, Arts and Culture concentration uh, admissions uh, session, which is going to be a great opportunity to learn more about this, uh, you know, great program for experienced journalists to get, you know, better training, deeper training in arts and culture reporting and criticism. I'd like to welcome uh, two of the faculty members, our core faculty members in the program, Professors Elisa Solomon and David Haydu as well as Alessandra Shade, a uh, graduate of the 2022 class of the MA Arts and Culture Concentration. And what we'll do is we'll talk a bit about the program, the curriculum, the student experience, and then we'll have some opportunity for you to ask questions in the chat, which you can direct towards me, but we'll do that a little later in the session. I think to start, I'd like to introduce our two faculty members, Elisa and David, and ask you both just to introduce yourselves to our uh, group here that are uh, watching and tell them a bit about your background in journalism and what drew you to this kind of area of the profession. Uh, shall I start, David, or do you want to jump in? Whatever. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I'll talk. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Elisa Solomon. Um, I started in journalism as a theater critic and arts reporter at the Village Voice. Um, I have an academic background in um, in theater. I have a doctorate in theater and performance studies. Uh, my first two books are about theater, so that's that's what I was writing about when I started as a as a cultural reporter and critic. Um, but having a lot of wide ranging interests and the voice being the what it was in those days, I was soon writing about all kinds of things as a general reporter, covering beats like immigration policy, Israel Palestine, queer culture and activism, women's sports. Um, meanwhile, always writing about um, theater. And at the same time, I was teaching in the city university system. I was teaching um, theater courses to PhD students and journalism courses to undergraduates. And when the MA program began at Columbia, it was just like the best opportunity to put those two things together. So I uh, came to Columbia um, when the MA program started, this program of my dreams. And um, in terms of my journalism since then, I, I write for The Nation, Jewish Currents, Theater Magazine, uh, other publications, and I'm currently working on a new book. Um, well, Elise and I are uh, companionable uh, collaborators uh, uh, on the faculty here. We both have a wide range of interests, and like uh, as Elisa focus, tends to sp specialize in theater and her writing, but doesn't write only about theater. I write a lot about music. I'm the staff music critic for The Nation, I also write about music for you know, various other publications. I've written a number of books. Uh, I have a second life in making music myself and I forgot to turn my phone off. There we go. Uh, sorry. And I was for many years a, a top editor at a magazine that covered all of popular culture entertainment weekly where my, my principal responsibility there was editing all the criticism but I also edited cover stories and long form features. So I have well, I have quite extensive experience as, a, as an editor as well as a writer. And I'm still writing about music and doing a new book about AI art and computational creativity, which is a big challenge, but a good one. Great, thank you. And uh, both of you, uh, Lisa and David, teach in our Master of Science program, which is our largest program at the school. And that's a great program of the flexible curriculum. And it's, you know, for students who can maybe come in with some journalism experience or no journalism experience at all and get all the fundamental training in it. How do you approach um, teaching in the MA program um, differently uh, than in the MS program? And what do you enjoy about, you know, creating the curriculum and working with the students in this particular program? Mm. Uh well, there's a lot of overlap, but the programs are, are, are unique. The MS program is designed for students who don't have much or any journalism experience or coming here to learn the fundamentals of journalism and while they're here to develop some high degree of high level of skills as a journalist. Uh, the MA program is geared to people who already have some experience and don't need to learn the fundamentals. Uh, but of course, we touch on the mo many of the fundamentals over the course of the program, but that's not, not our focus. Our focus is to help people who are already comfortable doing an interview, not afraid to talk to strangers, 
uh, you know, know what news is, or have a good idea, have a sense of what news is, to do deeper, richer, better uh, work. Uh, I, I could give some examples of how we might approach the same thing in the two programs, but maybe Elisa. Um, go, <laughs> okay. go ahead, go ahead, David. <laughs> uh, for instance, if we if we were covering the, the art of the interview in the MS course, and Elisa and I both also teach an MS program, I, we, I would deal with um, uh, 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 confronting the fear of talking to people you've never met before, of talking to strangers, uh, the importance of verification and, uh, and fact checking, and you know, all in the basics. Uh, in the MA program, we would address how to use, how to conduct multiple interviews with one subject, uh, and then also to interview around the subject to do secondary and tertiary interviews, so as to have a, a to be, have a fuller, develop kind of fuller body of materials to do, uh, you know, richer and deeper work. That's that's essentially it. Yeah, I think that that pretty much covers it. I'd say in the MA program, we are, um, you know, we're diving more deeply into the subject matter, um, as as you know from the descriptions of the program on on the website. Um, we do a lot of reading of various kinds of materials. Some is scholarship, some is journalistic, some is material by artists, um, and at the same time, students in the seminar are writing journalism. Um, but journalism that's more sophisticated and challenging than what MS students would be writing. Um, as David said, more, you know, multiple sources, um, diving deeper into the questions. And David and David and I do very intense hands-on editing. So we're working on your reporting and writing skills um, in that very um, individualistic kind of way, even though we're not like devoting a class to how to report a story. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, Alessandra, so could you tell us a bit about your kind of journey to Columbia? What were you doing before you came here? And as you looked at the options, how did you identify that the MA Arts and Culture program was the one that was the right for what the right fit for what you wanted to do? Definitely. <clears throat> I was a year into a career switch. I was struggling to break into the industry. I was freelancing at a no name photography magazine, and I just felt like I was really late to the game. Um, too old for internships, too green for entry level jobs. And so I was looking for a jump start. I applied to four programs in the city. And when choosing between them, I was very sure in my decision to attend this program. One, the professors, David and Elisa, are journalists that write the kind of articles that I wanted to be writing. Um, check out their work. That was really huge for me. And I think the leaders of any programs that you're applying to should absolutely inform your decision. Um, the second was the thesis program and the intensive focus on arts and culture writing. I was much less interested in news reporting. Um, and the third was the fact that the program was designed for experienced journalists. I wanted to be around seasoned journalists and not to skip ahead, but that ended up being one of the most beneficial aspects of the experience. Through my colleagues, I've gotten bylines, job opportunities, and just continuous support in a kind of tough to crack industry. Great, thank you. And uh, we've touched on this uh, a few times in what we've been talking about, that this program is specifically for experienced journalists. But I think every year there's a bit of confusion from applicants about um, MA or MS and who's you know suited for what. Maybe Alisa and David, we could just um, help um, clarify again for people thinking about you know what program they might be suited for, what kind of experience you would expect someone coming into the MA program would already possess uh, to be a good candidate for this more advanced program. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd say like like, David said earlier, one of the most important things is to already have experience reporting. So if you have a story to do on a particular subject, um, you know, you might need a little guidance on uh, identifying sources, but basically you would have a, a good idea about um, whom to talk to, how to find them. You wouldn't be afraid to call them up or send them an email or knock on their door. You would know how to... Um, 
you conduct uh, your interviews and you would know what to do with the material that you get to structure something in a logical way, not just in the order of how you got the information, um, for example. Um, you know, just those, those basic, basic things about journalism. You don't need to learn those in the MA program. You already know those so that you can go out and we can, you know, our job, David's and my job, is to push you from wherever you are, you know, up a few notches. And so, um, yes, you know how to do that. And now we're going to say, all right, now um, let's let's look at this unexamined assumption here that some of your sources seem to be taking for granted. Um, who else might you talk to about this? Or did you ask them about this? Or how would you contextualize that? We would push you to put things in more historical uh, cultural context in a reported story, um, things like that, and you you need to be you need to have the experience that enables you to be ready for that. Okay, I I'll just add that when we say we look for experience, that experience doesn't have to be as a staff writer for the New York Times. That's the job that will help you prepare for when you're here. That experience could could be you know, writing a lot for your underground paper, uh, under undergraduate paper, forgive me, and also an underground paper, <laughs> uh, uh, being, uh, they say being the editor of, of your undergraduate paper, or doing a, you're doing a few pieces as a, as a freelancer, well, in cases like that, we'll consider a candidate if they show spark and talent in the application, you know, the uh, and we we do select people like that. We can say, you know, this oh my God, this person doesn't have a you know deep 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 experience, but sh shows in the application uh, talent, intellectual curiosity, uh, kind of creative sparkle, and you know those are all things that we, that we look for and value. Great. And so that for people who are in the MA program, you'll have this core seminar in your concentration, in this case, arts and culture that will meet twice a week in the fall and spring for three hours each session. So about six hours a week of discussion, of uh, exercises, of uh, learning from faculty partners. Could you talk a bit about how you design the curriculum to kind of uh, develop from the fall into the spring and some of the mm -hmm. subject matter you might uh, encounter as a student in the uh, seminar? Yeah. I'm going to ask so, Elisa so, to handle this because Elisa... Elisa created the program, so she's the best person to start this discussion. Right. Well, it's definitely a team effort, but um, <laughs> in in broad terms, the fall semester um, seminar considers some enduring questions and packs some of those unexamined assumptions I was just talking about in our field. Um, we look at questions like, what is art? What is culture? Um, who counts as an artist? What's the nature of creativity? What is an arts institution? How do they work? Um, what are the obligations of works of popular culture and representing historical events? Um, the spring semester drills a down a little more into questions of policies, politics, and economics. How do artists make money? How, um, how does do, does the commercial industry work? How does the nonprofit system work? What about intellectual property and the question of appropriation? What's cultural policy? Um, who who does you know who who um, benefits uh, from it? And all the while, as I said, students are writing works of journalism for the seminar, um, reported cultural stories as well as criticism. Um, in the fall, we start like right in the fall, covering a performance festival called Crossing the Line. Everybody writes a, a one review and one related reported piece, it's sort of like jumping right into the deep end of some uh, experimental performance work um, and exhibitions. Um, we do a long form profile of an artist, cultural figure in the fall, and we do a podcast project. And then in the spring, um, there's a um, more emphasis on crit long form criticism and there's a team investigative project. And um, all through the year, we're working with faculty partners, experts from around Columbia or sometimes elsewhere, um, who uh, design with us special sessions on particular topics. So it might be Professor Jane Ginsburg from the Law School on intellectual property, or the art historian Kelly Jones on um, curation, or the cultural anthropologist Paige West on the concept of culture, um, the food historian Krishnan Endu Ray, um, and so forth. David, you want to add anything? I don't have anything to add to that. No. I could ever do. No. Hmm? And 
I'll just reinforce what Elisa said earlier is that the whole time you're writing journalism, even though some of the readings are scholarly and academic and the discussions around the table are often it, or, or rigorous and intention, intense and intellectual, we, you apply that learning and that thinking to journalism that you're writing all year. Mm -hmm. Journalism, all sorts, you know, you know, be quick turnaround pieces on the arts festival, reviews, longer form criticism, long form profile, investigative piece, kind of every kind of arts journalism you'll do over the course of the year. Uh, drawing from what you've learned through the readings, through the lectures, discussions with the various people who we bring in, field visits, uh, you know, we, we, we do a, a good number of, we, t we ex ex take advantage of being here in New York and do a good number of field trips to museums and uh, plays and you know and other arts sites here in New York. So you apply all that learning to journalism, and then, as Elisa said earlier, we we edit the, the heck out of it. Uh, and maybe you know Alexander could probably talk about that. It's it's one of the things I think we 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 all derive kind of the most satisfaction from, and I I think the, the students you know probably get quite quite a bit from that I hope so and and brainstorm where we can place them I placed almost every piece I worked on with your help mm -hmm. great and we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment but Alessandra maybe we could talk about some of your um highlights from this curriculum that we talked about in terms of whether certain subjects that were really things you look back upon now as being very you know inspirational or really engaging uh to your the work that you're doing now um certain faculty partners or reporting projects that you know really stand out uh, as you look back on the program wow um yeah, the, the artist profile was the most fun I've had in the program, and that still is one of my favorite clips to show. Um, I, we, you spend a, a long time working on that, um, kind of zooming out. The, the All of the workshop periods of the semester were by far the most helpful aspects of the program for me. Um, I think leaving the program, at, I see firsthand as media companies are getting leaner and leaner on staff, I've found that the process of editing is becoming more cursory and rushed. And some experiences have had to actually non-existent, like a proofread is kind of all you get. Um, and yet the editing process is essential to produce thoughtful work. And so in all of the workshop sessions, you receive line edits from every single classmate and your professor. So that's like, could be 20, versions of line edits. Um, and I learned so much about editing and the revision process. Um, and I feel like I've been able to bring that into my writing practice now when sometimes that process is entirely in my own hands, unfortunately. <laughs> And in addition to all this great, you know, workshopping you do in the seminar and all the learning you do there, you're also taking over the two semesters, three courses in other departments outside of the journalism school and kind of subject area related classes at the graduate level at Columbia. What was that like choosing from those options and how did that help you kind of understand your beat uh, better? Mm. I guess I, it was, I mean, it was cool to be able to choose a class that let's say like correlated with your thesis um, work. Um, yeah, chance to do more reading and just mm -hmm. deepen a very niche set of um, topics or skills, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and so Alisa and David, uh, we'll talk a bit about the master's thesis, which is the big project all the students will undertake as MA students uh, starting in the fall and then going all through the spring. What is it like um, developing that with the students and what kind of things can people think about in terms of subject matter they might be able to approach uh, through the arts and culture lens for a master's thesis? Um, okay, go ahead, David. Yeah. You know. I'd like to go back and revisit the last question just for half a minute because I'm I want to make sure that everyone under understands that one of the ways in which the MA program uh, in all the concentrations arts and uh, politics and science and, and business all the concentrations are unique 
is the relationship that we have in the journalism school and the other graduate schools here in Columbia. And that's that's unique. So the students in the MA program not only can but are required to take a certain number of classes, three classes while you're while you're here from the other schools and interact with the graduate students in the other schools. So if you have an interest in architecture, society, fine, you know, uh, sociology, fine art, anthropology, whatever the subject is, you can not just you know meet students there you know in, in in a social way here at Columbia but you could study with these leading thinkers in these other schools by taking courses in those other subject areas and they could feed your thesis work they could feed your uh ideas you have for future stories or they could just enrich your thinking and you know the uh just expand your mind uh and that's you know, a unique benefit of, of, of the program. Uh, recent thesis topics, uh, working on the thesis is one of my, my favorite things to, to, to do here in the MA program. And I could, I could just talk about a couple recent uh, theses. I, um, I should probably say, first of all, the word thesis is a bit of a misnomer. And the, in the MA program, the work that you do as, as a capstone project is a long form work of narrative journalism. It may have analytic uh, elements, uh, you know, elements of, you know, of, of, of historical elements, or, but it's essentially a long a work of long form journalism, a reported work of long form journalism, but in an arts or culture subject. And what does that mean? I'll give you an example of a few things this students have done over the past couple of years. Last year, we had a student do a thesis on nail art, manicuring as fine art, like avant-garde nail art. Uh, last year also, we had a student do a thesis on art among indigenous communities, specifically cutting edge avant-garde art in indigenous communities. Year before that, we had a student do a thesis on Instagram influencers as celebrities and the phenomenon of influencers as celebrities. Uh, the same year we had a student do a piece on why we could or perhaps should be eating rats. <laughs> uh, rodents uh, from a his cultural and culinary point of view. Rat rodents as a food source. Yes, I'm going to jump in just to get off of that image. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually ate. He actually consumed. Yeah, yes, yes, I know. Part of the thesis and described it. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll add a few other examples. Um, <laughs> um, we had one on how Medellin in Colombia became the new capital of reggaeton music. Uh, we had one on Nubian poetry and its relation to the Nile. Um, we had one on the kind of uses and abuses of war photography in Iran. Uh, mm -hmm. We had one on the um, um, emergence of queer figurative painting. Um, so, you know, a lot of a lot of things in a lot of fields and, and they're exciting to work on. In terms of the process, um, early in, in the fall semester, students are um, matched with their advisor slash editor. That might be David, that might be me, or it might be another um, very experienced faculty member in the J school or someone who works as an editor out in a, in a magazine um, or paper. Um, and we work with students one-on-one, -on -one, um, kicking around ideas until you develop a, a story, something that is both narrative and also has is, is following some big cosmic question, you know, so it, it's, it's both analytical and it's narrative. And we, you know, we meet regularly through the fall, helping you devise your reporting plan, um, working out what you need to read and talking about ideas. And then over the winter break is when students do the bulk of their reporting, but often, um, I mean, not just often, always and necessarily, of course, the reporting begins before that. Um, there are opportunities to apply for grants to um, to travel 
for that uh, that time during the winter break. Um, the students who wrote about, you know, Medellin and uh, Nubian poetry and um, a number of other examples did get grants to travel during uh, during January to do reporting. And then in the spring semester, you know, we're, we're really starting to work, you know, by the, by the end of the, the winter break, you have your, your lump of clay of a story. And then we spend the next few months working with you to chisel it, um, into a beautifully shaped narrative analytical story. And then in the last week or two before the due date, uh, David and I each sit down with each of our advisees and do a uh, out loud line edit. We read through the piece word by word, tweaking anything that needs tweaking at that point. You know, in the meantime, of course, we've plugged reporting holes and worked out the structure and so on. But now we're really working on the fine points of the prose. And, and those are very intense processes. Those line edit sessions can last anywhere from three hours to 12 hours. Um, and, you know, we, we get a lot of um, pleasure and um, it's very rewarding for us to to do that work with students and um, seems to be very rewarding for students as well. Um, I remember working with Alexandra in that and on her thesis. And in those last days, Alexandra had the idea, this is so great. We should make a YouTube channel. <laughs> what was your idea again? Word futs, Word where we futs. just work out the minutia of sentences and people watch us do it. <laughs> Alexander, so you, you know those channels where it's a couple of dudes and you just watch them playing video games? <laughs> yeah. So it would be like that. You just watch us doing the edits, but it's more fun than video games. Yeah. And Alexander, maybe you could take us back to kind of your initial process. How did you kind of develop yeah. your idea and what was it like um, putting this together over the two semesters? Um, I came into the program with some ideas, but it wasn't until I started working with David, my thesis advisor, that brainstorming and I came up with the idea that would turn into my final project on the neo burlesque scene in New York City. And I just highly recommend choosing a world where you want to spend a year of your life. Because for me, this was like the coolest year. I attended burlesque shows all over the city. I'm now a regular at the Slipper Room. I still go all the time. Um, I interviewed the coolest humans who perform burlesque. Um, the writing phase of the project was the more intimidating part for me. Um, but it was also really fun. You're not doing much else over the winter break, but writing, there's a lot of time. I'm kind of like a slow chipper. And so there was like more than enough time for me to work that way. Um, and really, I just knew that this was going to be such an important piece to have in my portfolio. Um, now that my thesis has been published, it's always something I use as a clip always because it is such a formidable accomplishment to write something so in depth and so polished. Like, I don't think I'll ever spend as much time working on one piece. Um, and I, and I do think that it's like, it can show editors at top publications that I'm able to handle something that's more complicated and nuanced and and time and you know over a long period of time great people uh, watching i put the link for that story in the chat so you can uh, read it yourself and uh, enjoy enjoy that piece um so for elisa and david um, i was going to ask a bit about where um, people have gone on to after finishing this program over the many years now it's been uh since its establishment um you know what are some of the career paths of ma arts and culture grads well, I started um, making a list. I think between the two of us, we're going to go over time if we just kind of go through where <laughs> people are. We have graduates on staff at The Atlantic. In fact, the culture editor at The Atlantic uh, is an MA grad. Uh, uh, Esquire and PR, Time Out, a student from Alexandra's class is an uh, editor at Time Out. Uh, the Guardian, the San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, interview. That's also someone from your class, I think, is an interview now. Mm -hmm. We have a student from a few years before, Alexander, who started her own magazine. Uh, it's an, had an entrepreneurial spirit and is the editor-in-chief of a magazine called Double Blind uh, a, mm -hmm. about psychedelics. Yeah. 
uh, and then we have people writing on a freelance basis for Vanity Fair, the New York Times, and you know many, many more places. That's some. <laughs> Alisa, can you think of others? Yeah, we've had students at, we have a cultural reporter at the Philadelphia Inquirer, um, Oregon Public Radio, um, Vogue India, New Lines Magazine, Smithsonian Magazine, did I say Zocalo Public Square? Um, and then students freelancing, I mean, are everywhere. Um, Guardian, Rolling Stone, New York Times, Hyperallergic, uh, Architectural Digest, um, uh, Pitchfork, American Theater, um, all over the place. And several have written books and based in, in a couple of cases based on their thesis expanded from the thesis in fact this is going to sound like a setup but i just mm -hmm. opened an envelope literally last night from a student from i guess maybe seven or eight years ago who did a thesis on a, a cast uh, in india who is tasked with burying the dead and she did a thesis on that and it is now a book uh and i just got the hard copy of it she she didn't sign it, so I'm a little cranky. But uh, <laughs> she did. But she sent me a copy, and that was based okay. on her thesis. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. And Alessandra, for uh, for you, you've been working now for a couple of years since graduating, doing a lot of great journalism for different venues. What kind of skills and kind of knowledge have you been drawing upon that you developed in the MA program? Um. I mean everything. I mean this 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 program kickstarted my career. So it's like, it's literally in every way. Um, right after graduation, I spent the summer freelancing and I'm interested in nightlife, subculture, sexuality, music, writing. So I, I remember David always said like, treat your career like an actuarium. And so like kind of hitting one tier of publications and then moving up you're not just like shooting up to the New York Times right away and you're like why am I getting rejected everyone so I immediately started focusing on indie culture pubs and within the first couple months I was working with office ID days paper those kinds of magazines and in the fall I uh, some the uh, a piece that I was working on actually led to full-time employment at paper magazine um until the magazine folded it's now back um i then became the music and culture editor at alternative press where i was laid off for a second time i hope this isn't as depressing as it sounds um there's been so much turnover in the industry but there's also so much opportunity to work on really cool projects um and so while i was employed at those two places i always negotiated in my contract that i was able to freelance because that process and those connections felt really important for me and like some of the um, you know, the places that people from my cohort, um, now work at timeout interview, like I've gotten bylines at those places because of those connections. Um, and through all of this, I've had the support of Elisa and David and the friends that I've made in the program. There's literally not a pitch article or edit test that I've written that has not been looked over by someone, which I actually cannot explain how valuable that is as a freelancer. Um, and it doesn't hurt to have a group of people. Hey, does anyone have an email that I can shoot a pitch to at such and such magazine? Um, I really think the network for me has been the, the most, the most valuable. Great. And for people who are at our session currently or who might be watching video of this later, uh, for Lisa and David, maybe we'll talk a bit more about what you look for in a strong application to this program. We talked a bit about the experience already that people should possess when it comes to journalism experience. But if that's already established, what's the next kind of step in terms of what you look for in like a promising applicant for this particular program? Well, we talked okay. about looking for people who, who know how to report. So we, we, we want to know that the applicant can report. We also want evidence that the applicant can think, you know. So we look for evidence of an active mind in the applications. A little creativity is useful, uh, but intellectual curiosity, you know, intellectual curiosity is very, very important to us, uh, as well as experience. Lisa? Yeah, um, I second all of that. I'd say in terms of the literal application we want 
to read fluid, well-structured essays that are reflective. We don't want to just read a prose version of your resume. Um, we want to know what ideas um, move you or trouble you, make your brain itch. Um, and we want to see that you're interested in ideas. Um, we want to see strong clips, samples of your writing. Um, and, you know, for sure, we want to see that you've done at least the basic job of a reporter and read the website for the program you're applying to. Um, mm -hmm. If your application says, I want to learn how to make documentaries, then you should have applied to the doc program. And, you know, I if that's what you want to do, I hope you will, and I hope you'll go to it. Um, but, you know, know what it is you're applying to and tell us why this is specifically the program you want to be in. I think that's that's a really important thing for us to know. And Alessandro, do you have any advice you would give to someone who is considering uh, applying to Columbia for a degree like this? I would really think about what you're trying to get out of the program. Um, I hope this isn't the wrong thing to say, but having the stamp of Columbia or NYU or any program isn't really going to help bring your career to the next level. I don't believe that's what has helped me. But becoming a better writer, finding a new beat, learning a new skill, gaining a network of intelligent, connected colleagues will absolutely help. <laughs> uh, like I said before, this program like completely launched my career. I still can't believe sometimes how far my career has come in just a year um, since graduating. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And it was so fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to jump in and just thanks. Thanks for saying that, um, Alessandra. It is fun. And I, I think one more thing, you know, this isn't something we can really glean off an application. Um, but our culture is collaborative and friendly. We are not a snipey competitive graduate program. Mm -hmm. You know, our seminar is not about students, you know, vying to show who's the smartest in the class. None of, you know, none of us is interested in that. And we're really interested in the sharing of ideas, challenging each other's ideas, being having your own ideas challenged, um, having the discomfort sometimes of your ideas being challenged, but always in a very, you know, respectful and open, um, open way. And um, in a, and, also, you know what Alessandra said that, that then you have this network um, in the world of people helping each other. You're a community of journalists out in the world, yeah. um, you know, most intensely from your own class, but from the whole history of mm. MA graduates who are, you know, out in the world. Um, we really are very communal and collaborative as as an ethos. And that's it. That's mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. And a question, I know every year there'll be people maybe at the session or maybe watching this video in the next few weeks who hear this great program, but maybe they hear, of course, what they what they need to know is that this is for experienced journalists and they might not have experience yet in, in journalism, the kind of experience we're looking for. If there's someone who might be better suited for the MS based on where they are in their career, what kind of things could they learn about in the MS if it turns out that you know they want to follow an arts and culture kind of track, but might go into that program? What kind of advising or classes could they maybe take with you in that program? Uh -huh. I mean, sometimes in the fall reporting um, uh, segment in the MS class, sometimes they, they're sort of um, subject focused reporting classes. There's sometimes a cultural reporting section in the fall. Um, there's often a spring elective in arts criticism. Um, students in the MS program write a, a master's project. It's less it's shorter and less ambitious than our thesis, which is like 10,000 words long and um, takes you know many more months but they do a master's project about 5000 words also working with a faculty advisor um you know that's always an area where a student can specialize in um in a topic that that interests them um the other thing to say is that columbia is uh, such a vibrant place there's there are events at the j school constantly um panels people from different um publications coming to talk about working there, journalists from around the world coming to talk about how they cover what they cover. Um, and that's just the J school. Um, you're also on a campus that like there aren't enough hours in the day to go to all of the uh, performances, um, exhibits, speakers, readings, panel discussions that are happening on the Columbia campus all the time. And so there's a lot of opportunity to just um, enrich your knowledge and experience of any area you're interested in just 
by going to things that are, you know, within a hundred yards of where you're sitting at any moment on the campus. That's great advice. Yeah. Um, I'll just add that uh, uh, some clarity on that. Elisa and I each teach the MA one term out of the year, and then we teach an MS class the other term, and we alternate. So this year, for instance, Elise is teaching the fall term, and I'm going to do the spring. But so the other term, we're teaching an MS class. So if you decide that, well, the MA doesn't seem like it's quite for me, I think I would fit in better in the MS, you could probably still take a class with each of us if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Great. We have but, a couple and, and we would be delighted to have you, but like I should also say the faculty at the J school was unbelievable, um, unbelievably amazing. And if you didn't choose our classes, we wouldn't be offended. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, spoiled for choice, I think, when you're in the program. Um, so a couple of questions I see in the chat now. One wants to kind of step back and ask um, Elisa and David a bit about uh, the establishment of the program in more depth about kind of what your goals were for establishing this concentration. What did you feel like maybe um, the field needed in terms of training that, you know, a lot of journalists maybe don't have that this program could help solve for? Mm -hmm. um, the program, the 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 program's first semester was the fall of 2005. Um, the MA program was the, the brainchild of the then Dean, Nicholas Lemon, who also teaches in the MA program. He teaches a very cool course called Evidence and Inference, which is about all MA students of all the concentrations take that together. It's about how different knowledges are produced in, in different fields and what passes for evidence and how things are verified in different ways. He also teaches in the MA politics course. And I think his his there was a lot of conversation at that time, you know, almost 20 years, well, really 20 years ago when they started thinking about it, about um, journalists needing to um, be better grounded in areas that they cover, be able to ask more nuanced questions, be able to read um, more complicated material and not just do quick, you know, two minutes on the phone with someone, um, to get a comment, but really to have the um, habits of mind as well as the skills to do deeper reporting about complicated questions. Um, and I think what they, they kicked around for a while turning the MS program into a two-year program so that students would do the skills work of the MS in the first year and then specialize in the second, um, but then realized that that wasn't really the most viable um, option, um, that there were so many people out in the world who, like Alessandra, were um, working in the area, but really needed or wanted to, um, to deepen their thinking and strengthen their approaches. Um, and so that the MA program would be an opportunity for students who specifically wanted to do that, wanted to be better prepared, wanted to do more than the hot take um, kind of quick story that uh, that often, you know, just are a little too superficial. Um, not to say that's what our MS grads do, but there's a <laughs> lot of, you know, there's a lot of that in our industry. And um, MA grads are really, are really the ones who are, you know, going forward and trying to, um, trying to expand and um, and be more complex. Mm -hmm. Great. And I think one more question as we're wrapping up. Um, someone who's very interested in the program, they're wondering, they've worked in uh, TV and radio so far. Is that a disadvantage if they're applying from that kind of professional background for the MA? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so yeah, we recommend well, it. We have a student right now who spent six years at CBS News. Um, we've had students with backgrounds in public radio and in um, in other other broadcasts. I mean, we do do a lot of writing and 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 print. Um, if you have technical skills already in audio or video, you can choose to do your thesis um, as an audio or video piece. But you need to already know how to do that. You can't you can't report and put together your thesis at the you know a complicated um expansive thesis at the same time as you're learning how to shoot a camera or learning how to edit audio you need to already know that um and we have we have some people in audio and video who 
um, vet students um, to sort of, you know, give them the thumbs up for their their skills in that area. Um, and then um, and we had a we had a great I think it was your class, Alessandra, or the next year. We had a student do a beautiful podcast. video. Hmm? The podcast? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Was, was Kelly in your class? Uh, mm -hmm. Did a, a beautiful um, video about um, about the challenges of um, first generation African American um, college grads and successful, um, financially successful. Um, people and the different um, expectations and obligations that they felt from their home communities. That was that was a, an award-winning, in fact, graduation prize award-winning video thesis. Mm -hmm. well, well, thank you everybody for these great questions. I know we're wrapping up now. Luckily, the nice thing, if you're watching this uh, right now, or if you're watching in the next few days, you should know there's a, still about two months to work on an application for the MA program. The deadline will be January 5th. 2024. So we're happy to talk to you in the admissions office about any questions you have as you go through the application process and thinking about educational financing. So please go to the link I put in the chat for Meet With Us, where we're happy to do um, drop-in sessions throughout the weeks, talking about any questions you have about the application or the right program that might fit what you are looking to do and what you've already done as a journalist. So happy to continue the conversation. Um, but for now, I'd like to thank uh, Lisa, David, and Alessandra for this great conversation about the MA Arts and Culture Program. I hope it's been really really helpful for a lot of people to understand it better in terms of what they might get out of it and who it's for. And we look forward to uh, continuing the conversation with all of you in the next few weeks. Um, thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Great to everybody. see you, Alessandra. Yeah, you too. Bye now. <laughs>